well, that sun feels amazing. And recently I have been drawn to the garden. Now, historically, I would refer to myself as being horticulturally retarded, challenged for the PC folks here. Um, and I started to grow things, which I have a history of killing things, like things that people think can't be killed, like lemon verbena and thyme and rosemary. Yes, I have managed to kill these things in the garden, but I know you have to be bad at things in order to get good at it. I've done the bad part and I'm here to learn. So I've got this little modest pit planted with my herbs, parsley, coriander, some stevia, a little bit of ra uh, strawberries, oregano, oregano, for um, those who pronounce it that way, more parsley because I use a lot of it. Some more thyme down here and lemon verbena, one of my favorite herbs. I've got some tomato plants, some chives, and again, more parsley. And I'm working on it. But what I don't have to work on is this over here. So dandelion. And it's one of those things that if you grew up like me, you never would have in, in a million years thought you should be eating this thing. But apparently, every single part of dandelion is edible. So from the flowers, which they make wine from, or sprinkle the petals into flowers, to the actual leaves that you can use to use just like a green, a salad green or cooking, to the root that you can actually dry and roast and create a like a coffee style beverage. It apparently doesn't taste like coffee and it's extremely bitter so you can put cocoa into it. But the whole thing's edible and it has tons of nutrients in it. And I can't help thinking of Henry David Thoreau said, a weed is simply a plant whose virtues have not yet been discovered. And I think that's really interesting. And my variation on that is when people refer to superfoods, I say a superfood is simply a plant whose virtues have been discovered. And as we're learning more and more about edible plants, um, things that we called weeds are in fact nutrient dense things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a pesto out of this. I grabbed some earlier and I just basically washed it, chopped it up and put it in the curry that Andy and I had for lunch while we were planning this. And so it's just as simple as grabbing, I'm trying to go for the younger um, leaves because apparently they're less bitter. Um, I grabbed some bigger ones for the curry that we had, I mixed it into. And I have to say, it was pretty bitter. And to me, it didn't add value to the taste of the dish. We just ate it knowing we were doing something good for our bodies and enjoying the curry flavor um, separate to that. In fact, if I'm really transparent, this is what I did. I kind of didn't chew the leaves when I got it in a bite. I just let them go down. They were chopped up. <laughs> um, but yeah, with the pesto, I'm experimenting here. I saw a recipe online and I'm doing a variation of it. Uh, I'm doing a vegan one, so there's no parmesan in this. I'm going to use nutritional yeast, um, some pumpkin seeds, garlic, olive oil, and some sea salt. And I'll see how that actually goes with covering up um, the bitterness. Um, and then get back to you when I have more ideas about how I actually use it in a recipe, use the actual pesto in a recipe. But for now, I'm just simply doing the... Um, the picking bit. Now, here's another thing that for me, I was resistant to gardening for years, but there's something that happened recently around the piece with exercise. I've always been exercise resistant. It's just, it's my Achilles heel, the thing I'm not good at. But when I started to connect gardening with like even just something as simple as this, doing squats, you know, for 10 or 15 minutes at a time and bending over and pulling things and lifting things, it was a way of moving my body and exercising that brought deep meaning to it as opposed to just in a gym where I wasn't actually accomplishing anything. Whereas if I'm doing it here in the backyard in my garden or even just over some potted plants, I'm doing exercise that gets my body going. It's very natural, you know, as we've done for millennia. Um, and uh, I'm feeding myself. So, and I'm saving some money because I'm eating weeds from the garden <laughs> and I'm tending things. And uh, so, I'm a late bloomer to gardening. Everyone said to me as a chef, surely you must like gardening. You must growing, like growing things. And I was like, no, I'm a chef. I like killing things, like chopping it and cooking it. Um, but I'm now kind of warming to it. It's just I'm in the right place in my life where I feel that sense of peace, where I can actually spend that time um, in the garden, not worrying about a lot of other things that I would have worried about in the past. And uh, yeah, I think I think it will show in my food and, and it'll be just another extension of the gifts and offering that I bring to the table.
making this dandelion pesto, I washed the leaves from the garden and put it in a plastic spinner and spun it so it was as dry as possible. Next, what I'm going to do is to place it into the food processor. So I've chopped it a little bit ahead of time so it just makes it one easier to get into the food processor and easier for the food processor to churn it all up. And to that, I'm going to add some thyme, fresh picked thyme from the garden, it's three garlic cloves. These are heavy duty garlic cloves, so they'll pack a bit of a punch. Next, I'm adding in some dried chili flakes, nice and bright for a bit of heat, and some pumpkin seeds. So I haven't roasted them, they're raw. Um, if you roast them, they'll yield a bit more oils and a little bit more flavor, but I want the nutrients from the raw nuts. And some sea salt. A good dash of it because we're using this almost as a salty ingredient. And now I'm adding in nutritional yeast. You can see I'm using precise and exact measurements. Kidding, of course. Um, and it's a touch, taste, and feel thing that I'm creating this recipe from. And then to bind all of this, I'm using a natural, first cold-pressed organic olive oil. So it's going to be extra virgin by the fact that it's not highly processed. And it should add not only a beautiful, delicious flavor and help create a creamy texture, but it's going to help bind everything in the processing. So in it again, it's a feel thing. You can start off by putting some olive oil in and see how you go. And uh, it's better to put in not too much in the beginning and then add some later because you can't unadd it and you're creating a pesto, which is a paste, not a sauce or liquid or smoothie. And once you've got your oil in, I like to put a little bit of lemon juice at the end after I've blended a bit. So as it gets to a mealy texture and you can see that the garlic is broken up, the pumpkin seeds are broken up, um, and it's starting to blend, you can add a little bit more olive oil to help it move a bit more if it's a bit stuck. And then at the end what I like to do is just squeeze some fresh lemon and squeeze it in. Sometimes I'll squeeze it into the bowl or squeeze it directly if there's no seeds that are present. Just squeeze it out with my hand, push it through with my thumb. You can use a juicer if you like, but I'm all for the hands. And then you know it's done by the fact that it's forming a paste and everything is broken up. And if you want it a little bit looser, you can add a little bit of apple cider vinegar or some more lemon juice or even a bit more olive oil. You pop it into a mason jar. I like to cover it with a little bit of oil. And then what you can do is just pop it in the fridge, use it for your pasta sauces, your quinoa, you can put it on toast. There's all kinds of uses for your dandelion pesto. And it will last for about three months in the fridge if you can get it to last that long. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and like it. Subscribe to the channel and share it with people you care about that can benefit from this. And join our incredibly supportive Facebook group. And lastly, if you're looking to get sugar-free naturally, follow the links below and find out more about the Sweet Freedom Online program.